Thanks, Marissa. So look, um, I always really enjoy uh, these types of presentations, but today I am extra enthusiastic because Nikki and I have the privilege of sharing some really special news. And what that is, is that IBM Technology Support Services and Fujitsu Software Business Unit have joined together in a partnership. And as of this morning, we've just launched an exciting new offering, IBM Support for Fujitsu Enterprise Postgres. Um, this is a big milestone between our organizations. It's something we've been working on for quite some time now, and we're really thrilled to be able to bring this new offering to market. Now, the presentation that we're going to give today, we are gonna talk a little bit about the offering, but more specifically, we wanna help everyone understand and get a better feel for you know, the product, Fujitsu Enterprise Postgres, and the value that it brings to our clients and how it can really help them with some of their strategic initiatives that they're, going, uh, that they're working on today. So before we jump into the content, Nikki, did you wanna make a statement about the partnership? Oh yes, Camilla, thank you very much. Well, on behalf of Fujitsu Software Business Unit and my team and I, we're delighted to uh, be part of this partnership. This is the culmination of a journey of discovery around technical excellence. There's a lot of synergy between our organizations. We're both global powerhouses. We both focus on open source and we both have a passion for Postgres. So we're delighted to be working with you and the team, Camilla. Great. Thanks, Nikki. And look, I love what you said there that we both have a passion for Postgres. I think we actually both have a passion for open source. And that's part of why we make such a great team and a great partnership. Now, that's actually a great intro into kind of our opening, which is where we wanted just to spend a couple minutes talking about, you know, IBM and Fujitsu Heritage when it comes to our participation in open source. Um, one of the reasons that we're actually really thrilled to be able to use this platform to make this an announcement is both companies have been longtime members of the Linux Foundation. In fact, we were both founding members of the Linux Foundation. So it, it's a very special moment for us to be able to actually make this announcement on today's webinar. Um, now, just from an IBM perspective, hopefully everyone on the call here is aware of IBM's particip participation in open source and all that we do and the promotion around that. Um, but I did want to share a couple things around specifically IBM technology support services and multi-vendor software, which is the area of IBM that I represent. So a lot of people don't realize that technology support services has actually been providing support solutions for open technology in excess of 22 years now, um, really long time. And what's really cool about this is actually a lot of individuals that are within our delivery organization, they have actually been a part of this open source journey with technology support services for a lot of those two decades. And what that means is that we bring, you know, a skill level, a depth and expertise that really is unmatched. Um, from a services standpoint, our offerings and our services are available to clients globally. And that's one of the reasons that we're gonna talk about a little bit later um, as to why this partnership means a lot because it gives us the ability to now bring Fujitsu Enterprise Postgres globally across 130 countries around the world. Um, with that, Nikki, I'll turn it over to you. And can you tell us a little bit more about Fujitsu's heritage when it comes to open source and actually more particular with Postgres? Fantastic. Yes, Camilla, I agree. Uh, again, there is that, that shared, that shared uh, passion and alignment around open source. And I think that's very important to work with organizations that are caring about the community and actively participating in the community and both of our organizations have this heritage. Uh, Fujitsu has, has been a founding member of the uh, Linux Foundation, been working in open source technology since uh, the year 2000, in, uh, starting off in Japan. The um, software business unit data management team has over 30 years experience in database technology and over 19 years with Postgres and Postgres development. And, we uh, continue to work closely with the community. We, can, we have a full team of uh, Postgres community engineers. We were one of the key contributors on the new version of FEP 14, of uh, uh, Postgres 14. And we um, have um, on top of Postgres developed our own um, enterprise version, which has extended capabilities for Linux one. We've now, you'll find out a little bit later, we've now also extended that even further with to look at the automation technologies people adopting cloud native um, need to use 
for driving the adoption. Thank you. Now, I assume that everyone attending this webinar is familiar with Postgres. Um, it's not, you know, a new technology. It's been around for a really long time. But what's changed is I think enterprise adoption of the technology has really skyrocketed in the past couple of years. And one of the things that you just mentioned was really around that, you know, Fujitsu Enterprise Postgres, it's a commercial distribution of Postgres, but it's actually built 100% off native Postgres, which is completely cool. Um, but at the same time, this means that for enterprise clients, they're represented with a lot of choice when it comes to picking what technology they should be leveraging specific to Postgres. So maybe can you tell me a little bit more about the key considerations that enterprise customers are looking for when they adopt Postgres? Yes, most certainly. So we uh, have designed our offering for digital enterprise Postgres from the ground up for customers that really care about enterprise features. And this means that without compromising the 100% native Postgres, we have additional features built in for resilience performance, security. Uh, the, these are important considerations as when startup projects go into production, they need robust production features in order for the organization to be able to adopt them and pull them out into production. In addition to this uh, set of features, they also need to have um, a level of warranty and solution assurance on the offering. Fujitsu Enterprise Postgres is designed for tier one enterprises from the ground up. Uh, this, the unique features that we have include security. We have a, a, a set of transparent data encryption, data masking, dedicated audit logging. This is built into the product. We have performance features that allow organizations to optimize workloads. We have a high-speed data loader that's you know, eight times faster. And we have a backup on Linux One. We've extended that further. We're, we're using the uh, Linux One compression that has a, a big uplift on the compression on the network as well. Resiliency, we have unique enterprise features for resiliency for disaster recovery with mirroring controller, well duplication and connection manager for those organizations that may be across an archipelago or where you have a patchy connection pooling. Um, we've extended this enterprise set of features even further now with automation. We have a level five operator container that allows organizations to adopt Postgres at scale for the enterprise and really leverage the not just the operational features for automatic monitoring, automatic scale out, but also make the dev developer experience of the pre-enabled features for security, performance and resilience that are available in the container. So we have, without compromising the native Postgres, we have actually these additional features that are included in the product and also available as a bundle with the operator. Thank you, Camilla. Thanks, Nikki. Look, one of the things about this technology that I love is it's really suited for, for clients and enterprises that are adopting multi-hybrid cloud strategies. Um, and in addition to that, also for companies that are looking for technologies that they can deploy across multiple architectures, right? So this is the type of technology that really aligns well with that mantra, build once, deploy many times, right? Now, what's exciting about our offering is actually we have the ability to now provide clients um, FEP uh, for multiple platforms as well. So across x86, Linux One, actually Linux on Z, um, as well as, you know, on-prem or in the cloud. Now, Nikki, in addition to technology support services within IBM, you've also been working really closely with our Linux One team. And I know that there's some additional feature functionality that's very specific to the Linux One distribution. So can you maybe tell us a little bit more about that aspect of the partnership and then those features as well? Exactly, yes. Well, the, the operator container, as I mentioned, is multi-architecture, which means that the features that you see here are available in the container for cross-platform from S390X to X86. Now, when Fujitsu started working with the Linux One team, it was a real pleasure to work with them also. Um, we explored the cool, unique enterprise value features of Fujitsu Enterprise Postgres and aligned them with some of the cool features of the Linux One platform. 
And these um, in, then resulted in an enhanced, optimized, dedicated build for Linux One that gives an extension of the security. So for example, our core security value proposition for transparent data encryption, data masking, audit logging is extended further with integration with the crypto card and the IBM Hyperprotect data protection, which used to be known as the data privacy passport. So you have a, a FIPS level certified secure database. We, on the performance and resilience side, we worked with the native compression on the Z Linux, where we've optimized the performance further. And uh, when you're moving around data, um, it's going to be, it's, it's much quicker. We do have some benchmarking data available on that. Um, we can, you can get from our website, which the link will be shared at the end of the call. The, um, the Linux uh, One um, deployment actually makes, uh, with the hybrid cloud offering, makes the ability to design applications that so you may have a Linux One as the, as the center point and x86 as your endpoints. So you can have a true hybrid cloud offering with security, performance, resiliency built in. Your developers and your application, line of business application providers only need to develop once and deploy to many. As Camilla mentioned, this is a multi-architecture operator container, level five. This also means that operationally, it can be easily integrated into orchestration pipelines. We're running in organizations and um, developers that are looking to reach um, customers in T2, T3, customers adopting different cloud technologies. This gives them the way to, to streamline their operations and get speed to market for all clouds. Thank you, Camilla. Look, I, you're kind of downplaying that level five certification. So I just want to highlight that for a second because this is something that Fujitsu was able to achieve just recently. I think it was just in October. And aren't you guys like the world's first operator that was able to achieve this certification? That's right. The first, world's first multi-architecture operator container. That's exactly correct. And, you know. Right. I just wanted to highlight it because you're being a bit humble, but that, <laughs> that is a huge milestone that you guys achieved. <laughs> um, the other thing I just wanted to mention is uh, specific to Linux One, one of the things that I, you know, I find is a major differentiator that you talked about were really the security features. You know, we find with our Linux One clients, things, you know, like security, we need to make sure that we meet the highest security standards um, so we can leverage these technologies. Clients can leverage them in, in industries and geographies where there are regulatory and compliance things that they need to be able to meet. So I think, you know, just another differentiating factor that is fantastic for FEP on Linux One. I now, think, uh, as I'm, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> on the, on, uh, you're right, um, Camilla, on the, what's also important is that organizations that um, have um, transparent data encryption is a very low performance hit on the at a system level. So it's, you know, 1% performance hit. Uh, whereas some legacy infrastructure, if you turn on your transparent data encryption, you make it a 33% performance hit. And organizations therefore, not only do they have to license it separately, it actually has a uh, technical debt in terms of running it. So our transparent data encryption is very, um, very, very um, optimized for the platforms. Right. So let's just shift gears a little bit. And we're gonna focus now on talking a little bit about market trends. Um, so my first question for you is around really what trends for Postgres are you seeing when it comes to adoption in the cloud? Well, we're seeing organizations and some organizations are running to public cloud as quickly as possible, especially as the regulators, uh, for example, in uh, this region opened up public cloud for, for FSIs. What that has meant is you do you do end up with a disparity of flavors of Postgres in the cloud, and not all Postgres is are native. So it's very important um, that if you need to have uh, cloud portability, uh, you need to be able to have a native Postgres. That's the first thing. The second thing is that organizations are really looking at as they starting to do a display strategy on some of their legacy infrastructure. They are really looking at how can they take this opportunity to containerize and modernize their applications. 
So we are seeing organisations going from bare metal cloud now up to, to looking at how now they can um, augment and fast track their development using automation technology in the operated containers. So maybe we can talk a little like the trends that you mentioned there. Um, fantastic. And honestly, on the technology support services side, I find it fascinating because I have a very different lens than you do, because when we work with clients, it's just in a different capacity. You're very much focused on uh, the technology where a lot of times I'm I talk about support all day long. Um, but a lot of the trends that we see align with one another. And one of the ones we were chatting about the other day was really how, you know, current events, world events that have taken place in the past couple of years, it's really changed enterprise priorities when it comes to IT, right? And one of the things that we've seen, obviously, is an acceleration of digital transformation initiatives, as well as cloud initiatives. And especially depending on the industry that the enterprise is in, we've actually seen that accelerate in some industries a lot quicker than others, uh, because it's been a matter of survival, right? Um, what's interesting, though, is when we talk with clients around this, there really is a big impact that comes out that we see, and it's around the theme of cost reduction. Um, for in technology support services, you know, we have clients that come to us that are looking for ways to really free up budget that they can refocus on strategic initiatives. Now, one of the great benefits of our offering is that we are able to provide our clients now with a rock solid commercial distribution of Postgres through FEP. Um, and then we can combine that with you know, IBM's world-class support. And ultimately what that results in is significant TCO savings for our customers, which again, can really help them accelerate you know, the journey to cloud or even digital transformation, whatever those strategic initiatives are that they might be working on. And you actually mentioned it a little bit earlier. You gave an example of one of these things. And that's really about a lot of these features that FEP offers. It's built into the standard offering. So a lot of times these types of features, um, you know, additional security elements and whatnot, they're actually treated as an add-on. But for our offering, it's actually included right in the base, which again, just represents additional TCO reductions for clients, which is fantastic. Now, Nikki, can you tell me about application providers or ISVs and what they're looking to deliver on cloud? Let's talk a little more about that. Yes, thanks, Camilla. Um, yes, ISVs are looking at reaching and maximizing their um, reach. Um, so they cannot really afford to have multiple um, support, multiple flavors of cloud, multiple flavors of Postgres. They need to have a take a standards based approach. And in, addi in addition to that, they need to make sure that their customers have a, an enterprise grade Postgres as a, uh, an option because it gives the customer the ability to free up budget to be able to deploy more uh, on the um, ISV application tooling without introducing any risk at the data level. So at the, at the data level, by working with Fujitsu Enterprise Postgres and the operator container, it means that they can reach uh, multiple, uh, multiple, they can build and deploy for multiple environments without compromising their development and, and also by adopting a standards-based open source, they can actually then innovate their platform you know, build in innovation, get faster time to market and broader reach. It's in, in particular in markets such as FSI, RegTech and FinTech, where their customers are currently running on the public cloud um, because the regulators have said it's okay. If the regulator were to say these classification, these types of applications need to move back into private cloud, uh, the customers and the ISVs need to be able to do that quickly and be able to prove that it can be done quickly. So this really is a this really is a, a good option for um, ISVs and developers where they can actually get an efficiency, they can get depth, and they can get time to market without compromising and getting a lock-in strategy. So it means that uh, application providers can give their customers choice, cost-effective, and uh, without inhibiting any of their um, um, development life cycle. Also with the, with the operational automation in the operator container, it means that their, organ, their customer and customer organizations can actually easily understand how they're going to deploy this new technology and how it's, how it's going to operate in their environment. 
Um, it's also very important from a standards base and from an architecture viewpoint that the discussions around data security are able to be had consistently, whether you're on, on AWS, whether you're on Azure, whether you're on Google Cloud, whether you're on private cloud. Thank you, Camilla. So now that we've talked a lot about uh, FEP, um, do you mind if we switch gears and talk a little bit about the other half of the equation, which is technology support services? Yes. Um, so yes, I was actually just about to ask you about that, and I'd love to hear more for the team to hear more about this as well. Awesome. So look, um, I'm fortunate that all day long I get to talk with clients about enterprise support in general. That's what we do in technology support services. Now, my passion in particular is really around open source support. And as I mentioned previously, you know, my area of the business has been doing this for over two decades now. Um, but when I start these conversations, I always like to talk a little bit about the definition of enterprise support. And the reason I do that is because I can talk to 10 different clients and nine of them will have different responses as to what enterprise support means. <laughs> um, so it's important that we actually kind of level set and make sure that we're talking, that everyone understands what enterprise support is, world-class support. Now, I like to challenge people a little bit because when you think about support, oftentimes you think about it in the traditional sense, which is break fix, right? So, hey, I'm using a technology, it breaks, I'm gonna call you up and you can help me fix my problem. Well, we've actually evolved our support model within TSS, and what we try and do is work with clients to actually provide them options, whether it's in a proactive capacity or even just work directly with their development teams to help them gain access to different elements of enterprise support. And what I mean by that is it's not just standard level one to level three support, but we also provide you know, assistance with things like how-to usage, installation, configuration. In fact, we tell developers, hey guys, when you're developing these technologies, if you run into an issue, give us a call and we'll help you while you're doing the build. You don't need to wait until you've deployed the technology or your solution. We can actually help you during that process. What's really cool with that is that obviously has a lot of additional benefits for our customers, um, especially in the area of, of developer productivity, which I'll talk about in a couple more minutes. Um, the other thing that I want to mention too, and I, and I highlighted it a bit earlier, is just the type of support that TSS delivers to our clients. Our delivery team like is world class. And I can honestly say that because I know so many of our delivery team, we've got support engineers all over the world, which allows us to provide that 24 by seven coverage that clients need. We can pick up the phone all hours of the day and give you the assistance you need to really ensure that look, when you do run into a major problem, we can get you back up and running as quickly as possible. But then, like I said, also help you become more efficient in these other areas of your development process. And one of the benefits of partnering with a great company like Fujitsu is the ability for us to collaborate on support solutions. So that means that if you call in with a really challenging problem and it's one of the you know, very, very few issues that we might not be able to handle, we've got the bat phone and we can call Fujitsu and get on the call with them and make sure that we're getting problem resolution to you guys as quickly as possible. Exactly, exactly. So, so Camilla, when when you work with clients, then really it's very much a holistic approach, and not 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 just necessarily about one technology. Yeah, that's very true. So, one of the things that I love about this partnership is that it really complements the rest of our portfolio beautifully. So, we provide enterprise support across a multitude of technologies, open technologies. Right now, we're probably in excess of over 300 commercial and community versions of open source software. Now, yes, that does mean that we do also support community Postgres, but that's one of the reasons that we absolutely love this offering is because FEP is built off native Postgres. And what we actually find, and I think you'll find this if you speak with or hear from industry analysts as well, is that the majority of our clients are actually adopting a hybrid approach when it comes to community and commercial versions of software. And it makes perfect sense, right? 
In a lot of cases, there are not commercial options available for select technologies. And also, as clients are building these complex software stacks, depending on the use case and what they need it for, they don't always need all of the feature and functionality that comes with a commercial version, especially if it's in a test and dev environment, but they still want that enterprise support that comes with it. Obviously, depending on the use case, um, there's a place for all of these different technologies. And our goal in technology support services is to help our clients really simplify and streamline support for the open ecosystem. So give them that you know, single point of contact, that one contract, that one number to call for any of their issues and really approach it from a holistic standpoint, like you mentioned. Great, so, so Camilla, it sounds like there's many factors that organizations should consider when choosing their enterprise support partner. But what are the, some of the new considerations you're seeing specific to the cloud? Yeah, great question. Um, so as we mentioned earlier, um, I touched on a, something called scarcity of resources. Um, and this is actually really interesting because as we've been building out our open source support practice over the past several years, what we found in the industry is that, you know, finding individuals, finding developers and technical folks that have a broad uh, a, a broad resume, if you will, of, of different technologies is very difficult to find. So if you have this concept of build once, deploy many times, oftentimes you need developers who have familiarity with different clouds, right? So whatever type of cloud platform it is that the company is using or multi-cloud, right? Hybrid cloud. Um, in addition, they have to be able to understand multiple technologies, right? Long gone are the days where we had developers who were focusing on one technology and you could make a living and a career out of that. You've got to be able to, you know, have an understanding of this, this broader stack, especially if you're looking to optimize, you know, your development. Because of that shortage of resources, that scarcity of resources, one of the things that's really cool that we found, and we actually found this out because we did a, um, a study in conjunction with IDC. And what we discovered is that because we're taking this, you know, proactive approach with clients and helping them solve problems before they occur, giving those development resources, you know, um, you know, uh, access to experts and knowledge and things to help them become more efficient, we actually have the ability to increase developer productivity by upwards of 18%. And we also found that study also found that we can help clients deploy applications faster. So I'm super excited because I have no doubt that our offering is going to be able to do the same with our clients, where we're really going to be able to help them address that scarcity of, of resources issue. Um, I think the other thing too, oh, sorry, go ahead, Nikki. I was, I was going to agree with you. And I think also the, some of the automation in the, the sophisticated level five operator um, to actually acquire those resources to get them integrate and get them to do that level of integration work in your, in your organization is a huge cost saving because it's already automated, already built in and available from IBM fully supported. So it's yeah, very good. Absolutely. Yeah, I know for sure. And I think, you know, the other thing too is this partnership, it's great because what it means for our clients is that they have, you know, access to industry experts, both at IBM as well as Fujitsu, whether that's for the actual, you know, subscription and support elements that they purchase, but we also are teaming together to provide a more robust set of services as well. So if clients are looking for assistance on how do they actually get FEP up and running, you know, things like implementation, migration, this is an amazing alternative alternative when clients are looking to kind of displace um, legacy, legacy databases, um, whether that's in a migration or whether it's really just to deploy net new workloads, leveraging the technology, we do see both. We are going to be able to offer services that help clients with that as well. Exactly. And, you know, as we said at the top of this call, based on many, many years experience in both organizations, from simple to complex projects. So what, 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 what Fujitsu says is, you know, Fujitsu software says the, the, it's predictable when you have a standards-based approach to delivering these types of expert services, uh, the results are predictable based on experience. So I think this is, this is terrific. And, and as you also said, um, our, our teams are working very closely together to deliver delighted customers and enable developers. 
Absolutely. And look, another common goal we share, we want to be able to delight our customers, right? And I really believe that our both our teams are going to be able to do that jointly. And we're going to now be able to do it globally, which is fantastic. Exactly. So look, and I was just going to say software business unit is committed to the continual innovation of both Postgres and the dedicated builds on the IBM platforms of Postgres. So we look forward to a long, uh, a long and um, wonderful partnership with IBM. Likewise. So look, I, I think that probably concludes, you know, our, our conversation for today, but I think we wanted to open it up for any Q&A that we might have. I believe that you have um, on your screens the ability to ask questions, um, and Nikki and I will now be monitoring that if you guys wanted to ask any questions. And by the way, while those are coming in, I just want to give a huge shout out to Nikki for joining because Nikki is joining us from Australia. So it's like, what time is it there, Nikki? Like 3.30 in the morning for you? Well, it's now 5.30 and the day oh, is... Oh, 5.30, sorry. <laughs> and it's day break. Early. <laughs> it's fine. Exactly. It's exciting to be here. So, Marissa, we actually don't have any questions coming in at this point. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to cover off before we bring this to a close? Nothing else that I, I need to cover. If anybody has any questions, you can put them in the Q&A down at the bottom. Um, otherwise, we can <laughs> let Nikki maybe get some rest. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> both. I'm excited. I'm ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Well, the, the ladies. So look, are ready. I guess. If, yeah, I guess if there's no questions, I just want to close by just Nikki thanking you and your team. You have been an absolute delight to work with. It's been an absolute pleasure, um, and I cannot stress how much I'm looking forward to working closer with you and your team and bringing this offering to market. I think it's going to be a great opportunity to help our clients really improve a lot of the initiatives that they're using. You guys have a wonderful technology. And I think that combined with our support, it's absolutely a winning combination. And I can't wait to see how we kind of shake things up in the marketplace with this. Absolutely. Fantastic. Really looking forward to continuing to work with you and your team, Camilla. And um, just a little little advert, there is a link in that chat, uh, the postgresql.fastware.com. There is a large resources section on that website where there's white papers, technical papers. Uh, please feel free to um, read, uh, go ahead and read. <laughs> thank you and reach out to us. So thank you. Yeah, and that, sorry, that was going to be the last thing I said. I, I say I was going to do a shameless sales plug here and just say, oh if anyone's God. interested in learning more, you can either reach out to Mickey or myself or any of your local technology support services sales representatives. They're ready to go and answer questions. So um, feel free to reach out. Uh, we're here to help. So with that, thank you so much. Appreciate you guys joining us today. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Camilla and Nikki, for joining us today. And thank you, everyone, for attending this webinar. Um, just a quick reminder that this recording will be on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today. Thank you again so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everyone. Thanks.